shit. My kids. I have a steering wheel. <laughs> what a knobhead. <laughs> uh, a good way to start off this video with a broken car. So we're pulling into the shed now and we're going to pull the motor out. Quick little rundown. We didn't get much driving in at SA just because obviously of the issues we had with our snap wheel studs. And then obviously the motor. I did end up tagging the wall. So series two tail light gone, which is a bit upsetting. Rear pod is just falling off, that's all. So I can just chuck that back on. But besides that, it's all relatively the same. Front bar looks like it's about to fall off. So I should probably fix that up. At the moment, we are a month out from Battle Royale, which we are actually leading the championship in. So I need to try, figure a way out to get some money and some time to get this motor rebuilt in time. Uh, hoping we haven't done too much damage. I did start it after I lost oil pressure. I had to see if it was like what it sounded like and it just sounded like the knocking was coming from the head. So it gives me faith, but also it worries me because I hope the head isn't damaged to the point where we can't use it anymore because it has been modified for RB26 ITBs. Hopefully I'll have it out tonight and maybe even get it to look at the at the internals by the time it's out because we have to go out tonight. Anyway, get this thing on the hoist, do a little clean up, get into pulling it out. Motor is now out, gearbox is off, and we've got the engine bolt to the engine stand now. It's taking a lot of effort for me to not rip into this thing and start pulling it apart because we do have to go out. So I'm just gonna leave it here, bit of a mess as well. Motor looks absolutely awesome. So it's very sad that we have done something. I would love if I could see a crack in here somewhere, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in the actual gears, which is behind the pump, behind the cover. So that's the plan. I'll pull that apart tomorrow and find out. I'm really, really hoping the head is all good. I'm very, I'm pretty stressed about that. But um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go. I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, I got the motor on the stand, getting pressure washed now. But it's too heavy, I can't flip it over. <laughs> I have to get the old boy out here to give me a hand to flip it back. Oh, that was a mission and a half. I wish I filmed myself doing that because it felt really dumb. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, we're getting, now it's on the stand, I can get it up and uh, actually start pulling it apart. Well, we've pumped out a lot of work tonight. Got the motor mostly stripped. I just got to pull out the rods and the pistons and stuff like that. But I did get the oil pump off and instantly, straight away, you can just see that that is not good. That is, cool. yeah, oil pump has just shattered itself. So at least where we know the, the culprit. I'm going to pull the backing plate off and get a proper look at it. And um, yeah, go from there. It's looking good so far. Woo, god damn. Just pulling the girdle off now to have a look at the crank and then we're going inside. I was gonna leave it, but I did see a bit of a heat mark on the crank there. And I just wanna double check it just to um, make sure it's all good. I seriously cannot believe how lucky I've gotten again. This is the second time this has happened the first time it happened was because my ITB adapter plate leaked into the motor, got past the rings, ended up uh, cavitating the oil. So I lost oil pressure. And all I just, all I done was spin a bearing number one, and then I damaged the head right here, which i been repaired. And I can't believe that it's happened again. And I've gotten so lucky to the point where I would almost be able to just chuck bearings into this and be able to run it. So I'm so happy. And you can see the bearings here, a little bit of scoring, very, very minor. I'm so happy. New oil pump, <laughs> new oil pump, new bearings, new rings, good to go. Now, obviously with these issues, uh, I'm finding some weird pitting on the rods and stuff, um, on the bottom of the pistons, you can see up here. And I believe that is because when I was doing the head drains on my sump, I noticed there were a few of the oil squirts snapped so i spaced them 
down just a little bit because the pistons actually hit them. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that's just from having the debris bounce around underneath. So also again, very lucky to get away with that. So I'm gonna pop the crank in, do a big clean up because again, Monday is work day for my old man, my brother. So got to clean all this mess up, get the car underneath the four post. And yeah, anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Hopefully I can start ordering some parts and get us ready for Battle Royale, which is in like less than a month now. It's, I think it's the 3rd of June. So we are, we might be pushing it. Anyway, see you guys tomorrow. All right, we're back guys. We have got the motor completely stripped. We've got the crank here in the vise. And I'm doing, just cleaning up everything pretty much. So I'm cleaning up the crank right now. And a good thing to do with, with these old engines is to do a proper clean out of the journal. So you can see we've got a, it's a bung in the crank right here. So that is the oil gallery, which goes and feeds all your main bearings and your rod bearings. And with the help of Driftsquid and Lewis Engineering, who have done a video on how to do this, I, I wasn't too sure how to tackle it. Uh, but, but if you want to go check out his video, it's way more in depth and professional than this, uh, this one's going to be. Pretty much just drilling out this alloy bung in here. There's one there, one there. There's one on each rod bearing, so there's one there. I believe there'll be one there somewhere. Yeah, so there's six of them. And we're gonna, yeah, pretty much just drill them out, tap them with a thread. I've already done some practice ones on my spare crank. Just got, I didn't want to stuff this one up. Um, so this is how far I've got to go down to make it proper. Uh, I did get too big of a bung of a grub screw but that doesn't i don't think it's going to matter it's going to get balanced anyway so it's only a touch bigger so i just got to drill it out like half a mil and yeah so that's what i'll do i'll drill it out now uh one of the things is be careful with my first my first practice when i done on my spare crank i try to center punch it and i just punch it straight through the best thing you want to do is get a small screwdriver chuck it through one of these oil holes to stop that from going down, because you might get stuck. If, if, sometimes they might move, most time they do move when you drill them out, and you don't want to push it past there, as you're kind of screwed. Pretty much no way to get it out, unless you, I don't even think you'd be able to get it out. Unless you have a really long drill bit that ends up going all the way down, which I do not have. So I'll drill it out, out now with a three mil drill bit, and then, I was, uh, slow, and then I'll slowly progress in size. Well, I hate my life. I've done like three test drills on the stock crank and I go to drill the first one and it snaps a drill bit in there. I am so pissed off right now. Like seriously, I've done this one. There's one, that one there. There's that one there. And that one there. Just trying to get it perfect to figure it out properly. And I didn't get any issues with this. No issues. No issues at all. But the first one i drill into on my good crank i snap oh my oh god i've been swearing a lot <sighs> i've gotten most of it out i'm just kind of like digging digging around like this in there try not to i don't want to have to drill into it. i don't want to actually go too much into the housing or something so i'm going to try to get it out as much as i can with this screwdriver if i can't get it on if i can't get it out i'm going to just go on to the other ones and then if it happens again, I don't know what I'll do. Oh, this has been like an hour ordeal fishing for this little bastard. Thank God. All right, now I can drill the rest of it out. I am so angry. It legit took me like an hour to get that out. It kept breaking off, breaking off, and it would slowly move, slowly move a little bit more. Now, hopefully we can just focus on drilling it out. 10,000 years later, we are done. Got it all drilled and tapped now. So I drilled this hole out to 7.1 and then went through it with the tap. Then I tapped it out with a M8 1.25. So just chuck it in. And what you'll do is you'll put Loctite on this and then tighten it up properly. But because we are still got to clean this out still, I'm just leaving the grub screws out. There we go. All nicely tapped. But this one ain't. 
This one's got a tap in it. God damn it. So this is the one I snapped the drill bit into. Got that out, obviously. Went to the second one. Drilled it all. It was all sweet. I just needed to go a tiny bit further. And I started doing the tap. And what do you know? It snaps off. Luckily, I had some spare taps. So I went and, went and uh, finished off doing all the rest. So now I've just got to focus on trying to bloody get this bastard out. And then we can get on, on the cleaning. And it's annoying because I have to do it tonight because it's getting picked up tomorrow morning while I'm at work. I don't think I've had this balance, or maybe I did a few years ago, maybe six six years ago, and I built it when I was 18 years old, back when I used to do things properly, uh, <laughs> buy the books. I can't remember I mentioned this. I've also just ordered my PRP billet oil pump with spline gears in it. This is the M1 extended collar you get put on, because normally on the stock ones, it is like half the size. Yeah, so that's stock. You can see it's not even the size of my finger. It's about 10 mil, maybe a little bit more. 10 mil is what the what drives your oil pump. Whereas with like the M1 high flows as well as the billet gears, you can get this collar put on and it's obviously extended. So it's much more surface to drive on, uh, less chance of failure. In my case, I thought the N1 high flows had stronger gears. Little did I know, they had basically stock new gears. So I've been hitting limit of like not really caring at all. Um, when I should have been. <laughs> if I hadn't known they were stock gears, I would have done this a while ago. I would have um, probably done it in the last year and year or so, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. We caught it, so that's the main thing. Uh, I'm going to get safeties wired in when I get it tuned, hopefully before Battle Royale round three. Um, yeah, order the billet PRP pump, as well as a 1.2 millimeter Nitto head gasket, as well as some cam splash plates. So... They go across the entire cam, hopefully reduce blow-by issues because I'm still getting blow-by issues even with the extra breathers on the motor. But anyway, I'm gonna start trying to pull this tap out and then I'm gonna start trying to clean. Just goes to show you that persistence is goddamn key. That was stuck in there bloody good too. I could not get it. I was, I was really starting to stress out. But all right, no, I'll re-tap it now, and hopefully I don't snap this one. <laughs> oh, good in the hood. It's all been cleaned up. Just lock tightening the grub screws now, putting them in. So this is the last one to go in. Nice little nip up. Snap. Oh, God, I'll bloody... Lose my banana. Just looking over the crank, I'll just have another look over it. I'm seriously amazed. There's a bit of wear there. Should be okay. See what my mate says who's machining it. Hopefully he can um, get us back to us pretty quick. Should have the oil pump by the end of the week, so then we can get the collar to him. So then we can press the spline driven collar onto it. Um, and he's gonna get the rings, bearings, everything. I probably should get a new water pump. Ah, uh, yeah, a few things got to get. But yeah, I think that's gonna be it for this video because I can't really do much. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the video of me pulling out the bone motor and talking a lot of bull crap. I was speaking to a couple of mates and they reckon I talk too much. Um, so clearly I didn't listen to them. Didn't listen to what they were saying. But um, if there's anything I can do that will improve the videos, just let me know in the comments just because I'm not sure what anyone wants. So I'm just filming what I think people want and I'm just filming what... People might want to know that I sort of know. I'm not a professional engine builder by any means, so, you know, I feel like I've said this before. That's the other thing as well. I don't want to be filming the same thing over and over because that's all I do is sort of drift events, drift car repairs, all that crap. It sort of obviously will get repetitive from somebody else watching it from their point of view. Um, anyway, I'm probably going to have a hard time editing all this. But yeah, this is the 10th of May now, so hopefully... Oh, God. So I think, yeah, 3rd of June... It's got to be done. Got to be in the car tuned and ready. I'm probably have to make a new exhaust and a bunch of other stuff. So it's going to be really pushing it for time. Hopefully I can get this engine built in the next two weeks. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next video.